Amphisbina in an illustration from the Aberdeen Bestiary Amphisbina The Amphisbina is a mythological, and eating serpent with a head at each end. The creature is alternatively called the Amphisbina, Amphispine, Amphispina, Amphisbina, Amphista, Amphivina, Amphivina, or Amphivina, and is also known as the mother of ants. Its name comes from the Greek words Amphis, meaning both ways, and Bainain, meaning to go. According to Greek mythology, the Amphisbina was spawned from the blood that dripped from the Gorgon Medusa's head as Perseus flew over the Libyan desert with her head in his hand. After which Cato's army then encountered it along with other serpents on the march. Amphisbina fed on the corpses left behind. The Amphisbina has been referred to by various poets such as Nicander, John Milton, Alexander Pope, Percy Bysshe Shelley, Alfred, Lord Tennyson, Aimé Césaire, A. E. Hausman and Alan Mandelbaum, as a mythological and legendary creature. It has been referenced by Lucan, Pliny the Elder, Isidore of Seville and Thomas Brown, the last of whom debunked its existence. A 15th-century amphisbina on a misericord in Buckinghamshire the amphisbina has a twin head, that is one at the tail end as well, as though it were not enough for poison to be poured out of one mouth. Pliny the Elder, Naturalis Historia the amphisbina however is a snake with two heads, one at the top and one in the direction of the tail. When it advances, as need for a forward movement impels it, it leaves one end behind to serve as tail, while the other it uses as a head. Then again if it wants to move backwards, it uses the two heads in exactly the opposite manner from what it did before. Claudius Aelianus, Characteristics of Animals The Amphisbina grows twin heads, one in the proper place, and the other where the tail should be. For this reason the snake glides in a circular shape, as the heads, contrary to what is right, strain from both ends. Salinus, Polyhistor These early descriptions of the Amphisbina depicts a venomous, dual-headed snake-like creature. However, medieval and later drawings often show it with two or more scaled feet, particularly chicken feet and feathered wings. Some even depict it as a horned, dragon-like creature with a serpent-headed tail and small, round ears, while others have both necks of equal size so that it cannot be determined which is the rear head. Many descriptions of the Amphisbina say its eyes glow like candles or lightning, but the poet Nicander seems to contradict this by describing it as always dull of eye. He also says, from either end protrudes a blunt chin, each is far from each other. Nicander's account seems to be referring to what is indeed called the Amphisbenia, a group of real lizards. An Amphisbena on the coat of arms of Gamina Zapolis in Poland the Amphisbena is said to make its home in the desert. In ancient times, the supposedly dangerous Amphisbena had many uses in the art of folk medicine and other such remedies. Pliny notes that expecting women wearing a live amphisbina around their necks would have safe pregnancies, however, if one's goal was to cure ailments such as arthritis or the common cold, one should wear only its skin. By eating the meat of the amphisbina, one could supposedly attract many lovers of the opposite sex, and slaying one during the full moon could give power to one who is pure of heart and mind. Lumberjacks suffering from cold weather on the job could nail its carcass or skin to a tree to keep warm, while in the process allowing the tree to be felled more easily. In the Book of Beasts, T. H. White suggests that the creature derives from sightings of the worm lizards of the same name. These creatures are found in the Mediterranean countries where many of these legends originated. In John Milton's Paradise Lost, after the fall and the return of Satan to hell, some of the fallen angelic host are transformed into the amphisbena, to represent the animal by which the fall was caused, I. E. A snake. The amphisbena is mentioned in the first book of Andrzej Sapkowski's The Witcher series, I. E. The Last Wish, when the Witcher's protagonist, Geralt of Rivia, is recalling past events when he meets an old acquaintance named Arian. The Amphisbina was endangering the region of Cobra until the beast was slain by Geralt's hand. Brandon Sanderson's novel Skyward has a character whose name is Arturo Mendes. His call sign is Amphisbina. In the 1984 Scandinavian animated film Galavance, an Amphisbina appears as a minor antagonist. The two heads, a red one named Edel and a blue one called Fice, frequently disagree and argue, and sing a song about their miserable plight. Amphisbina appears in some editions of the tabletop role-playing game Dungeons and Dragons. The Amphisbina appears in the Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode Battle Nexus, New York. This version is one of the known champions of the Battle Nexus. Big Mama had Michelangelo and Meat Sweats compete to feed each of its heads in order to satisfy. They managed to work together to pull it off. 
Amphisbina has appeared in several video games as an enemy or boss monster, including La Mulana and Bravely Second, and Lair. A creature called Amphisbina appears in the game's Castlevania, Symphony of the Night and Castlevania, Portrait of Ruin but bears little resemblance to other renditions of the creature. Appearing as an eyeless four-legged reptile creature with the upper body of a human woman sprouting from its long tail instead of a double-headed serpent. Amphisbina appeared in an animation created by Montiome, in the form of an evil creature called Grim. Of the different Grim, the Amphisbina appears to be the King Taiyitu, a two-headed snake or serpent. The name referencing the Taiyitu which is a symbol or diagram in Chinese philosophy representing Taiji in both its monist and its dualist aspects. Even more so by the coloration of the Grim being black and white for the respective heads and parts of the body. Thanks for watching.